ladies and gentlemen, Sean Whiting. Good morning. How's it going, buddy? Going good, man. Man, you are looking good, dude. Thank looking you. good. It seems like every time I see you, you've lost like a hundred pounds. It seems like it's just you get skinnier <laughs> and skinnier. No, you're no. looking good though, man. Looking Thank real you, man. good. I'm I'm feeling really good. I really am. I feel better than maybe ever. Yeah, we we were talking quite a bit about it before uh, we hopped on the podcast here. But how much weight have you lost since the beginning of all this? You said, um, well, this journey, and then that's kind of a loaded question. Because yeah. uh, I've yo-yoed uh, with my weight uh, over my entire life. But um, my heaviest was about 435 pounds. Wow. Um, what What are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I weigh 180 pounds. Jesus, man. That is awesome. Um, but uh, really, this time around, uh, I had, uh, over a decade ago, I'd lost a good amount of weight. Um and had plateaued around 270. And uh, then uh, at that time, but also started playing music again out in the bars and stuff. And so I was, you know, uh, uh, the other old habits you yeah. know, started creeping into. a lot into, of sugar in it. Uh, you know, drinking and, and doing that more often and eating late and stuff like that. And just kind of got uh, got out of the habit of being healthy. And then over time, it creeped back up on me. And in 2018, uh, the first 2018, I was up to about uh, 375 again, and I was like, I can't believe I, you know, I was like, here I am again pushing 400. Um, so uh, in 2018, I lost about 100 pounds, um, and then in 2019, um, I had plateaued again, mm -hmm. and I always seemed to plateau and then start to regress, and I started putting some weight back on and I put about another 30 pounds or so back on again by the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. And at that point I was like, I can't do this anymore because this yo-yo and going up and down is, is just as bad, if not worse than me being overweight, you know, being obese. And, uh, so I started going at it, going at it at a different angle. Um, started, uh, uh, really focusing on my mental health mm -hmm. and started thinking about, you know, uh, what's making me, you know, ha feel this way, you know, mm -hmm. and um, started working on that and then started focusing on my life and, and what changes I need to make. Mm -hmm. um, and I started working, you know. Um, I'd even considered uh, weight loss surgery and started consulting a dietitian. And um, that kind of got me on the right track again. I, mm -hmm. I, I knew how to lose weight, but it was – you know, keeping it off, but it got me back on the right track. And did, was, did you go through with the surgery? No, wow. no, no, I didn't. Um, I had, I, I had intentions of, if I didn't, I had gotten to the point where it, I thought maybe it is a tool that I needed to use. Mm -hmm. And, um, what, so, what, what kept you from going with that? Because there's a lot of people that choose that route. Over I didn't want to the do long term. It. Honestly, I didn't want to have it. Yeah. Never at one point did I want to have it. The thing was, but I was making myself realize that I was going to lose this weight. So really, I used it as motivation. Mm -hmm. um, as I, I really was like, I, I don't want to be cut on. I don't want half, of, you know, eighty percent yeah. of my stomach. And, and, and if you, and if you didn't go the alternative natural route, then that was going to have to be the choice that you had to make, and that, that was your motivation. That was my motivation. Cool yes. man. And uh, so I, 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 I got my. I got my head right, as I like to say it, and I started focusing and um, started using some of the tools that uh, that we have. Like I started using um, apps on there. You know, there's different apps that you can get on your phone, like My Fitness Pal, and uh, mm -hmm. and there's one that's called Buried uh, Buried Tastic, um, and it's kind of focused toward people that go to have bariatric surgery, but it's still a very good uh, very good app. And I started using it, and I started keeping track of everything I eat. Started weighing my food. Um, I stopped drinking alcohol. I stopped uh, eating sugar. I stopped eating bread. Started eating, you know. I just started eating things that yeah. they always say to do. You know, all the all, all the doctors and all the, you know, they're like do this, and it is true. Do that. Yeah. And yeah, well, it, well, they're doctors. They're pretty and, smart people. And, yeah. and these guidelines, they do work if you yeah. if you stick to them. I, I'm I'm a fact. What what, uh, what do you mean by you weighed your food? Uh, like, down to my portion size. I, I will, okay. I weigh, I keep track of everything. I keep track of how many ounces of, 
meat I'm eating. I have a digital scale at home that I, I weigh how much mm. chicken I'm eating. I, I will measure out my servings. You know, like I eat a half a cup of something or a cup of something. You know, a I just usually tablespoon. like go by the serving size on the back of whatever it is. I've never thought about getting a, out an actual scale and doing it that way. Yeah, I'm, I've I made I, I did it to that. I wanted to know almost to the exact calorie. Wow. I got the I got that. Uh, obsessed with it, if you want to say, but it, it, it I've had, a, I have a bit of an obsessive uh, personality, yeah. yeah, and I decided to use it for something positive, and uh, that's good, man. So I, I've started uh, keeping track of every calorie I put in my body. So I kept my calories. Uh, started out at sixteen hundred uh, a day, um, and started watching my macros, which is some people, for people that don't know, your macros are your protein your fat, your carbs, and your sugar, things like that. And I kept my – I'm on a very high – I still, to this day, I'm on a high-protein diet. I, I eat – I probably – I get in about a one gram per pound that I weigh. I, I put I eat like 100 – about 180 grams of protein a day. Uh, I keep low fat, like 50 mm-hmm. grams or less of fat. Um, I, I'm between 50 and 100 grams of carbs. I, my sugars are very low. I, I – I keep my sugars down to like 10 grams a day, and I still do that, and I'm going to uh-huh. continue to do that because it keeps me accountable. But um, but you but you also feel a lot better too. See, uh, uh, man, like, uh, yeah. Well, I, well, like here re- uh, recently, I've been trying to lose a little bit of weight, and definitely not like you. I've just got a little bit of a gut that I need to lose, and yeah, I've been like eating very clean here the last two weeks. But uh, last night we wanted to eat hamburger. Well, my wife wanted to eat hamburger helper, and it was like the first like really. Mm-hmm. Like a meal like that that I've had in a while, and man, afterwards I just felt horrible. And but whenever I'm out drinking a protein shake or eating eggs or all these natural mm-hmm. foods that are actually good for you, the energy that it gives you and just the feel like it's weird how food makes you happy. It's unbelievable. And yeah. To, the thing is to think about it as sustenance um, and as fuel, not entertainment. That's mm, that's, that's something that we that we all that I did. I mean, you think about it. You go and you know, I let's celebrate. Let's go out to eat. Or I had a bad day. You know, I'm, I'm gonna go buy a tub of ice cream. You know, yeah. or I'm bored. You know, we're watching a movie. Let's get a pizza. Yeah. And we because it's so accessible here in this country. Um, well, well, anyway, well, that, well, that's another thing that I think it is. Uh, what what a big problem is in this country is like you said, how accessible. It is. If I want a healthy cheap snack food. or something like that, oh yeah, it's very cheap as too. Very cheap as well. A hamburger costs a dollar. Salad costs seven. But yeah, if yeah. I, if I'm wanting to, uh, you know, keep on my track that I'm on, then I have to most of the time pack my lunch or mm-hmm. just hope that Double Quick has something or pay seven dollars for a salad. And even then, the salads that you get, I mean, they're just loaded down with stuff that's probably just as fattening as most exactly. meals. So, I mean, it's you, you're you you're better off just doing it at your house and packing meal, your own meals. Meal, prep. meal prepping. Yes. Meal prepping is, it's, is it's, it's a lifesaver. It is, man. Um, you know, we won't I, we won't talk much on the. Uh, on the pandemic or anything, because you well, know, I was, we, was going to say that like, you're like the only person that I knew that I know who has lost weight <laughs> during the pandemic. It was oddly enough, it was uh, really good for me. Um, it, it uh, you know, you don't. I had no need to go anywhere. I made sure we had what we needed, and um, so I was able to take advantage of that. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I no longer was eating out. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to shows and staying out late and things like that. But, you know, I didn't have any shows to to go to and stuff. And um, that you know, and that was playing music has been my job for the last several years. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I was able to utilize that time and I was able to meal prep and uh, eat the same thing every day and and keep track of everything. And I just I got focused and. Was able to, uh, you know, about that time I started uh, doing things around the house, all the things that I'd put off for years, you know, mm-hmm. and had time to do them. And I was, uh, I mean, painting my house, you know, just doing yeah. something, always doing something outside and staying yeah. busy. And, you know, I became meticulous about my yard, you know, 
I became that guy. You know, I'm <laughs> in my forties now. So well, I was about to say this is probably happening with the age. That might not have been a quarantine. Oh well, yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, but uh, it just it did. It turned it it turned out to be really good for me to be able to, um, you know, get things uh, get things moving in a in a better direction. That's incredible, man. And, and I'm. It's it's really inspirational to see where you've went to. I was going through your Facebook just uh, kind of getting ready for this the other day, and I seen a picture of you back in the day with the long hair and how big you were. I'm just and I'm like, that's not the same person. Like, I mean, if you put I'm those side by side, you, you've lost I'm literally like, half of that. Well, even probably less. Yeah, what well, we, even yeah. even more. I'm more than half than wow. less than than that. Ha- have you thought about bringing the long hair back? No, no. Unfortunately, uh, I've lost uh, hair as well as mm. weight. <laughs> uh, so, well, um, I think this look like it suits you more, man, and especially like the kind of I don't know how to term it. I guess badassery that you're doing with your music now. I don't know, man. The look that you have going on, it suits the feel of the new stuff that you've been putting out here lately. Well, thank you, man. I uh, I don't know. I'm just really kind of just being. Being me, um, this is who I've always felt like on mm-hmm. the inside, and now I'm finally at a point in my life where I can just, you know, feel comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. And well, well, that seems to be a problem with a lot of artists, right? Like they try to present this image that they aren't, and a lot of times it makes them lose their mind because you're two totally different people yeah. in the same body. I right. think that. Uh, somebody's art no matter what field it is actually does better when they accept who they are and start You're doing stuff right. through their own actual perspective You're you, exactly pe- right I think people can like like just they, they get a sense when something's fake and they that they, they can tell and they I just think they appreciate the realness more I think so too I think uh, everybody uh, involved will be you know the artist and the and the fan and the listener um, just benefit from people being genuine. Uh, I think we just benefit <laughs> in life being genuine, you know, yeah. and, and cutting out the uh, all the the fakeness. Um, and there's a lot. We of all, we're all world. we're all works in progress, man. We're we're all we all have our issues, um, and I just firmly believe in you know accepting them, yeah, and exactly. accepting each other, and for you know things for what they are the freedom that you have whenever you do accept who you are i mean it's it's a really beautiful thing and, and i struggled that way for years too that yeah. i wasn't trying to accept who i actually was and it's still an everyday struggle with mental health but absolutely but, but like once you accept your flaws and like it's, it's kind of like how um, the old saying of like the addicts, you know, like you you have to say that you well, you can't help them until they say that they have a problem. You have mm-hmm. the addict themselves have to acknowledge that there's a problem. And it's the same way with mental health. It can be that way with anything with. That's it, man. Yeah. Um, I've something I've kind of learned is uh, acceptance and. Um, and. uh have no expectations. Expect- That's another big one. Um, you know, uh, have a goal and and uh, reach for that goal and let that goal guide you, not your past. Um, but you know, expectations can can be detrimental. Yeah. And then you know, it's like I tell I told a friend the other day it was like three things to live by: is expect anything, accept everything. And expect nothing, mm. you know. Dang, man, that's good. You and should read that on a Facebook cover <laughs> no. wall photo or something. <laughs> no, that's no. good, man. That's a good one. But and that's that's something that I've started living by, and I'm much happier. Man, that that really is a beautiful mindset to have, and it's 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 just that. I well, whenever you started this uh, journey, did you work on your mental health first before mm-hmm. the weight? So, I so you, I think that if somebody goes about it that way, it may help a lot because that's, yeah, that's, I mean, you can't help anybody until you help yourself, right. like that saying goes. Right, you gotta want to help yourself, and yeah, yeah um, and I feel like that's what happens with a lot of people with uh, with weight loss, with especially having surgery. Um, it's a great tool, and a lot of people want that quick fix, um, 
And unfortunately, I've seen a lot of people that have had weight loss surgery. They end up putting their weight back on. Yeah. Um, well, well, it's and, an it's an easy way out. It's kind of like whenever somebody rich gifts their kids something and they don't appreciate it. It may be that same kind of mentality. I mean, it's a that. lot to put your body through, you know, mm-hmm. um, to to be cut on and have part, and have things removed, and you know, and, and going through that. And but I mean, we all have. We also have, obviously, this society as a as a as a whole has a short uh, memory span these days. You yeah, know, our attention span is pretty small, and I guess people it, that that goes to leading it. You know, who's to say I won't falter? I, but I certainly have a grasp on things a lot better than I ever have. Um, and I'm going to do my best to not ever get back in the shape that I was. But to go through, uh, a lot of people don't go, don't get right here first, man. And yeah. so their their body just changes and they can't, and they physically can't eat what they were able to before. But then your body straight, they'll start, you start pushing those limits and yeah. your, that stomach will stretch right back out again. And then next thing you know, their people put weight back on because they didn't change their lifestyle and their mental attitude, and their, you know, they didn't they didn't take into consideration of what they need to do. Yeah. So, you know, I I mean I hate to, I don't know. Well, I, I don't want to preach or anything like that because I want to help anybody, yeah. and it's like if I can do it, anybody can do it. Is basically yeah. what I'm saying. Well, that's what we were saying before we uh, hopped on air here because you see, like all these celebrities and famous people go from like the Ethan, what's his last name? Sup- Supley. Supley. Um, the guy from My Name Is Earl and Remember the Titans for anybody who don't remember we're talking who we're talking about, but. He went from 500 pounds to like 270, whatever he is now. But people look at him like, oh, he's a celebrity. He has all the best uh, doctors and dietary supplements known to man. But whenever you hear somebody like you, a normal, normal everyday person, mm-hmm. talk about this amazing transformation, it can show, well, I hope that it can show people that anybody can do it. Um, I hope so. I, I, I'm passionate about it. Um, and... I'm passionate about helping people. Anybody out that reaches out to me, um, you know, on, on Facebook or personally, I, I I take the time to, you know, everybody wants to know, you know, how I do th- how do I do this, and yeah. I, I often give people probably more information than they want because um, <laughs> I'll go into detail, you know, like I do this and this and I eat this many calories and this is what I'm eating, you know, because yeah. I'm passionate about it. I, I I know the struggle. I've struggled with it my whole life, and I I, I want people to feel uh, better about themselves um, and to be because I, I know how much better I feel. I mean, I, yeah. I my my son, my youngest son, um, he uh, he's lost over a hundred pounds too. He's wow. seventeen, and he uh, he was uh, up to about two seventy or two seventy five, and now he's at like one sixty five, and. Um, he well, I, was that because of whenever? Like, did he start whenever you started? I think, um, I, I think, yeah, I kind of motivated him. Mm-hmm. That's awesome, man. And, uh, yeah, that's great. I, I, I mean, feel you, you could have saved. You probably saved your kid's life. I, right there. I, I feel um, I'm very proud of him. I'm very proud of both my sons. Um, my, my oldest son had put he had put on put on some weight here in the last couple of years, not quite as much, but he's he's down about. Uh, Recently, he's down about thirty or forty pounds, um, it's and beautiful. I'm uh, extremely uh, proud of him. And it makes me feel good to think that I could somehow or another made them want to, to you know, get healthy. I mean, my youngest son and I, we uh, we go out jogging together now. I mean, I nice. I, I used to, I mean, and w- nobody's chasing me. You know, it's like used to. The only way I'd be running is you know, I was running <laughs> from something. Um, and now, you know, we we'll go out and do you know a couple miles a day. Um, Wow, man! And I've never felt, I've never felt better. Um, yeah, well, like, well, like you were saying earlier, like how, well, how we we're saying earlier, the uh, food gives you energy. Yeah, I, like I've heard people say that in the past, and I was like, eh, I don't know about that. But as I've been eating healthier here the last few weeks, man, like I just, I don't know. I can, I can, I can move. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not just all tired and don't want to do anything. Like I don't know. Like I'm. Get my passion back. Exactly. I'm, I, I'm uh, starting to work around the house a lot more. I, it's, it's yeah, f- food uh, can be energy. Uh, I mean, energy. it's clearly, uh, I mean, it's not just like most, this pretty much all of, of this, what I've done has been by, is by, by diet. Mm-hmm. It's been by eating healthy. 
Um, now, so, so but, you act, like, well, I know you still exercise, but but I mean, I didn't start. I've never, I never went to the gym, you know, I, nothing like that. I, I, but I, oh, even over the winter, I mean, like last summer, I did become more active. Yeah, I did start walking, uh, you know, but nothing, nothing crazy, you know. I, mm-hmm. I'd go out and try to walk a mile, a mile and a half a day at least, you know, thirty minutes, um, you know, and then I started working a lot in my in in my in my yard, you know, raking the yard and. Mm-hmm weed eating and things like it doing things around the house just staying active but um once i've started getting I, but i kept getting more and more energy yeah. you know and then over the winter i continued even though it was cold out i'd still take my dog out and we'd go you know yeah. a mile and a half or two miles and uh but then i started realizing i felt so good that i started running i was like i want to get my heart rate up i was like this isn't this isn't enough and then yeah. i felt so good that i would take off and then was like I started doing, you know, in spurts, and then eventually I started like, well, I think I'll jog all the way up my road and back, and I could do it. And I was like, I don't know that I've ever been able to jog this far in my life, you know, wow. even as a kid. And um, so, yeah, it's, but it's predominantly the, what you're eating. Yeah. Well, that's amazing, too, that most of that has been from di- uh, dietary supplements and eating right, because that's another uh, excuse that people use, too, is like, Oh, I just can't afford a gym membership. You I ain't got the gym, time man. or anything like that. Yeah, that you can't use that excuse in in your you, story. That's that's a beautiful thing, man. So, whatever, do you have a cheat meal or anything like that, or are you just straight? No, no, no wow. I, don't believe, I don't believe in cheat meals, man. See, I, I think I think that we just we're human beings with flaws, and we like to give ourselves excuses. And I think that if you give yourself enough of them, like the cheat meal, or like, oh, I just don't have time today or anything like mm-hmm. that, that's how it starts building I'll back you, up. I'll tell you what I do, because sugar isn't a – well, I, I mean, I, I will make no bones about it. I have a food addiction. No. Uh, well, it, it, it releases addiction. dopamines in your it, brain it just an like addiction. any other drug does. Yes, it does. And, it's, and unlike dr- drugs, you have to have it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, once you become addicted to a drug, of course, you have to have it to – to, without going into DTs or possibly dying, but you know, you have to eat in order to live. Um, so I find out that I don't know that it's worse, but it's just as bad as as you know another any other addiction. Yeah. Um, but you know, sugar is the is well, clearly I, a, uh, an addiction, and I have that and that as well. And what I've just what I do is basically uh, I don't eat sugar anymore, but I do eat. Uh, you know, artificial sweetener to give me that little bit of uh, that sweet sweetness that I need. And I drink like, I don't even drink caffeine anymore. I drink decaffeinated coffee hmm. and I'll put artificial sweetener in it, you know, or yeah. put some uh, sugar free creamers and things like that in it. Hmm. And I drink protein shakes. I love yeah, chocolate. I, I love protein so shakes. So I'll man. drink, uh, I'll, you know, I'll drink a protein shake. That's the only thing sweet that I eat, but I do allow, and gum. I've, yeah. here, my, my doctor, I have sinus issues, and my doctor was like, you know, start chewing some gum. It'll help keep that keep fluid out of your ears. So, hmm. uh, you know, I chew gum, and I, I drink my coffee a little bit sweet and drink protein shakes. And that's my – that's if you want to consider something as a cheating, that's it. Yeah. I, like, I don't eat sweets anymore, cake. Anything like that? Yeah. I, I've I've never been a big sweets person, so I, I've had that to have my my advantage over the years. But mine was always just fried food. Like, yeah, um, I don't eat fried food anymore either. Yeah, and, and I and I've really been trying to uh, cut back from that. Like it's been like a two three weeks since I've ate pizza, and man, that was a thing that was like two three days a week. You know, I like just oh god, I yeah, love pizza too, man. Yeah, I, but 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 there's also. Uh, healthier ways to eat pizza see like that's what i've uh, figured out now that i've been trying to eat a little bit healthier here is you can still eat some of your what you called your favorite foods in healthy forms right. like the uh ah, what do they use that for the crust for pizza it's the uh oh, cauliflower cauliflower yeah i one of my buddies made me one of those i'm like it's delicious I, know. I hadn't had no uh, idea or or the uh instead of using spaghetti noodles uh zucchini noodles you can buy mm-hmm. those no, i haven't tried that but I, yeah i've seen it's that. all right it's it's all right yeah, <laughs> but yeah it's, 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 it's still good it's still good uh, <laughs> I, I i have occasionally um because i you know pizza is something that i love you know it's like i don't really consider that cheating like i won't have sit down and eat half a pizza i will i've i've been able to teach myself some moderation and I will every now and then I'll allow myself a slice of pizza. You yeah. know, if there's if somebody if the kids or the wife or somebody brings one in, you know, yeah, yeah I'll have a bite. You know, and that but I'm able to 
be like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. You know, and if I'm still hungry, I go get something healthy. I won't, I won't yeah. just sit there and pig out on a, you know, on a whole pizza. Yeah. Well, I was talking to uh, Judas downstairs, and uh, <laughs> we, well, one of my favorite meals right now is a turkey burger. Instead of bread, use the uh, lettuce leaves, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Somebody uh, told me about that a few weeks ago, and I've been eating them ever since, man. Love those things. Yeah, it's good. I, I never man. thought that I would like lettuce more than bread, but I don't like. After certain meals, especially a pizza or a burger, you just feel like crap, yeah. and you and you want to sleep. You don't have any yeah, energy. That's... But whenever you can substitute a lot of that and eat it, or eat it in moderation, like you were talking about, you feel good. You don't have that sluggish feeling, and I can't stand that, man. I know. I just feel like I, crap. That's something I don't miss either. Yeah. I'm a, I, I'm a hot sauce fanatic now too. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm like that's become my new. Uh, my new addiction is I I try every kind of hot sauce that there's known to man. Is I that just, the weight loss? Lo- weight loss is basically like, I, like hot X lax or something. I, no, <laughs> no, it doesn't have that effect on me. Uh, but it, dude, I I don't know. I just cover like almost everything I eat. Put hot sauce on some kind of hot sauce on it. It is good, man. I, I, I like like just old school Tabasco. I, I don't try to go crazy like some people do, but yeah. on some chicken tenders or some Brunswick stew or something like that. It's good. I like uh, it. I, I, I like it on everything. Hot, mild, whatever. Any more, though. I guess something about your my age, too. You know, I'm yeah. maybe my, my taste buds are, most of them are dead now. I don't know. But <laughs> used to, I wasn't that, I wasn't really that into spicy stuff. But nah, man, I love it now. Man, well, uh, speaking about spicy stuff, this new, uh, excuse me. Okay, three, two, one. Sorry, a little cut. I got a text there. Apparently, uh, Judas downstairs, he puts uh, hot sauce on his eggs. I do. For real? Yeah, sometimes. Y'all are weird. But I can. I guess I can see it. I don't know. I've just never put any type of liquid sauce on my eggs. I've heard people like ketchup, but not hot sauce. Uh, I, I, I don't. There's almost, I don't hate it. I, there's I, all, be pretty I, good. I, I, I have. I, I, will, I, I have to be... You know, with Judas on this one, I will I will put hot sauce on my. Who thought eggs you'd too. ever be agreeing with Judas? I know. Who would have ever thought? <laughs> <laughs> well, man, uh, this new EP that you put out, though, past and present, man, it is awesome. Uh, Jimbo, did he do the album art? Yeah, Jimbo Valentine did yeah. the album. Yeah, I, the album. I, I can start telling his work now. Did, yeah, did, it's did pretty he, recognizable. Did he do the Perfect World uh, single, yes, too? he did that one, too. Yeah. yeah, his work, man, you can just tell. And a big shot to Jimbo Valentine. For anybody that doesn't know what we're talking about, that's the guy that does a lot of stuff for Tower Childers and other big artists and events around the area. I like the yeah. one that uh, the Kicking on the Creek poster that he mm-hmm. done. That mm-hmm. was killer. He's been doing it for a few years, too, yeah. But, man, this new EP is awesome. Like, it's, it's so weird, though, like... Because I know you, and you're such a nice, humble, down-to-earth guy. Mm. But whenever I'm listening to this new EP, I'm like, this is one badass, angry dude. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> it's just a totally, it's like you're almost a totally different person. But, man, it is awesome. So how, how did this uh, new EP come about? Um, well, um, I was messaged um, by a guy named Sam Rogers from over in uh, Jackson, Kentucky. He's got a little studio called... Uh, Fat Cave Studios. Great name, too, by the way. And uh, Sam had asked me to come over and do some uh, Fat Cave sessions. You know, he was asking some local artists to come over, and he'd do some video and do recording, you know, while you're in the studio. Yeah. And um, so uh, I went and did a solo session, and we ended up having uh, some issues there that we didn't notice at the time I was there. And he he uh, asked me if I'd come back and do it again. I was like, you know what? I think I want to bring the I, I'm very much in a band mode right now. I, I'm, I don't want to do solo stuff right now. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to bring the guys over. And he's like, absolutely, bring them. So, you know, over the quarantine, <laughs> quarantine, or, or over the, well, quarantine slash pandemic, uh, you know, I had finally filled out my my uh, roster with my band. And I'd had uh, Austin Lewis playing guitar um, recently and uh, Trevor Literal playing bass. And my buddy Clark Sexton uh, he had started decided to start playing drums for me too, and um, so we go over and we recorded twelve songs that day. And we recorded those are live songs. Those are that, like what you one hear. take just solid. Yeah, three. those are live. Um, and I went in there and I had I was like, you know what, I'm gonna play some of these old songs that I used to do that I've written fifteen years ago, and then I had uh, you know did a couple covers that day and and 
did a couple of new songs. And afterward, things turned out, you know, I was like, wow, we, you know, we were on that day and, and, and Sam did a great job capturing everything. And so Sam and I sat down and I was like, Hey, let's, let's do this. Let's take six. Since we did 12 songs, I was like, you, you release six under the fat cave sessions. And he was like, if you want to, you can release, you know, you release six under, just under, under you. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, that's awesome. Let's do that. So I took these six songs, and they're um, um, The Rain and The Chosen I wrote uh, like 15 years ago. Uh, I played those in, in various bands that I've had. Have you never recorded it? Or I anything? have. I've recorded them and put them out before and stuff, but never like this. Yeah. <clears throat> there was people that uh, there's, you know, and, and fortunately over the last few years, I've, my audience has broadened some, and I've got some new fans and friends, and uh, they'd never heard those songs like that. Yeah. So um, I wanted to put those out, and then you know, down under, I I've been doing that what song. What made you do that one, man? I've done what? that like that for a long time. That was really by accident. Um, I'm a huge uh, I'm a huge Colin Hay fan, the lead singer from Minute Work. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's been touring for the last probably 30 years doing solo work, and uh, I saw him playing on YouTube uh, playing that song acoustically. And, um, but I never sat down and learned how to play it yeah. uh, right. And then one day, one night I was with some friends that back years ago in a little, little place called a cafe on Main down in Paintsville. And, um, I, we was sitting there feeling pretty good, you know, and, uh, I started, I was like, I want to play this song. And I started playing and I didn't really, I was like, I realized I didn't really know how to play it. So I just started playing the chords this way, thinking it was kind of right. And mm -hmm. just started singing it, and that's what came out whenever I played it. And the, I was, everybody's like, "Well, that was, well, you know, what the hell was that?" And I was like, "I don't know. It just came out that way. It was kind of work, didn't it?" And I just kept playing it that way, and yeah. so it just progressed over the years. I've just continued to play it like that, and and um, yeah, it's kind of morphed into this uh, its own version that I that I do. It sounds totally different, but yeah. it, it's it's so cool, man. Whenever I seen you uh, post your status, like kind of hyping up the EP and talking about how it's going to include covers, I was like, oh, it's probably going to be like Waylon or some Bob Seger, like rock and roll stuff. I, I, I didn't know. You know, yeah. I was not expecting to see Down Under on there. That was the last song I expected you to cover. But uh, man, you killed it. I, I, I love how artists do that too. Like they'll take a song and cover it and you would never expect them to do so, yeah, like a uh, Weezer done, Mr. Brightside, uh, not Mr. Brightside, but uh, Mr. Blue Sky, and that was I love that version. Or, uh, well, I mean, heck, there's different covers going all down the right. One of the best, probably of all time, is uh, Johnny Cash's Hurt. Yeah, yeah, that's probably one of the. And you know, Nine Inch Nails, they don't even do well, that song anymore. I mean, Chris Stapleton's uh, Tennessee Whiskey. True. You know, he did two songs. He mashed. He mashed up two different songs. That's what he did. Yeah. You know. I, I've listened to uh, George's version from back because I did, I thought I didn't know it was a cover yeah. at first. And yeah, man, Chris knocked it out of the park. I still like George's, but oh yeah, Chris killed it. Um. Oh yeah, he kills everything. Um. But uh, well, yeah, man. That there was a couple new songs I put on there too that uh, I'd had uh, laying around that I hadn't done anything with. You know, and uh, I was like. You know, let's let's put them on there. So, and I decided to release uh, one of them as singles, and I released a couple singers. Do you know it was, you know, during this we weren't playing playing shows and stuff, and I thought it was a this is a great time to have some content and try to keep people engaged. Mm -hmm. You know, um, keep people don't let them, anybody forget who I am. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, you know, and Sam also did. Uh, you know, he filmed that whole day, so we had uh, we did a live video. You know, for the for down under um but then some of the footage um he didn't realize it like some of the cameras that were issues with and stuff for some of the other songs was we were going to do a, a live video for for every song <clears throat> and then he was like you know he run a run an idea by me he was like hey what do you think about us doing you know let's do an actual video and mm -hmm. so i was like sure let's let's do that so he ended up coming up with the idea for that first single, Perfect World, and, um, you know, he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, and, it's a great video. And uh, so he was like, let's do another one. And so, you know, he said, what are you thinking for the rain? You know, the first one on Perfect World, I, I kind of had 
you know, I had a lot of input on that, you know, and yeah. uh, what my, you know, based going with the song and, and stuff like that. And then on the rain, I, I was like, not as much. I didn't have as much input. I kind of let Sam and his, uh, he's got a partner named Stephen Millars uh, at the uh, at Fat Cave. Um, and they kind of like came up the storyline for the rain because the rain's very, uh, it's really just existential. The, the song is, it's just mm-hmm. about the meaning of life really and about, and about death and mm-hmm. things like that is really what the song's about in a broad way. And they were like, well, this, this leads for a lot of interpretation. Um, so what do you think about this? And so, uh, you know, I was like, all right, let's go with it. Let's just see what happens. And so we went to, we went to, ha- um, Steven is from Hazard, and we went to his house and shot the footage and, and did shot some of the, the footage there in uh, in downtown Hazard and 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 put it all together. And I, he Sam just uh, you know he's just really talented guy, and yeah. he, he put that put the new video together. Was that, so that was his like first time doing a music video? Because um, I mean, like that was like top notch quality. He hasn't man. He done, kicked it out of the park. Uh, he, he, I don't know that he's done, he's done some video work, you know, over, over the last few years, but I, I don't think he'd really done, he hadn't done anything like that. I thought it was kind of funny though, how it goes from like perfect world, that being the song that it is just laid back, relaxed, a beautiful song, a legit beautiful song to the rain where you're cutting off somebody's finger. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that, hey, man. You know what, man? Uh, no rules. <laughs> I know. He's, I, I, I don't. I'm one of those people. I'm like, whatever, man. I, <laughs> wait, wait. Put, you can't put me in a box. So I know that the dude stole the ring after the whole poker game and everything. But why'd you have to cut it off? Like, couldn't you just like slid it off? I, I know because uh, I, <laughs> you, I, you, you know, beat I the kinda, dude to death. It seemed I, like uh, so. <laughs> that was all Sam's. That was all Sam's idea. I thought it was pretty violent too. Uh, that was gruesome, man. And I was like, uh, I was like, are we? You know, I kind of. I had to talk with the wife, and I was like, I talked to Sam. I was like, we went a little overboard on the violence, didn't we? Um, I liked it though. And, and, and I was, and I, but I was like, you know, what? He, I was like, what do you think? And I was like, ah. You know, my my wife's like, they, there's worse stuff on yeah. the six o'clock news. Exactly, and I'm and, like, you're right. Let's well, just go well, with it. You know, but it's it's such a, a you know just a kind of a rugged, rough song that you almost have to have a music video like that if you really want to get the feel of yeah. it. You know, yeah, and, man. Yeah, that's a God. That was a very dark but badass scene. Um. The blood it and was everything. Fun. I mean, it I was guess. so fun. It, it was, was so legit. fun doing that. I, I've, I've, uh, there's, I, he's got uh, a lot of footage that uh, that I'm wanting him to put together for some blooper, a blooper <laughs> reel and stuff. Because we, we really got, I really got into it. I, I've realized that how much I enjoy acting. Um, yeah, you, I, dude, you killed that. Especially I, when the camera zooms in on you and you say, "Yeah," I'm like, man, that's such a that, that was so cool. I wish I could be that cool. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, man. It's all it, it's all smoke and mirrors, uh, man. It was uh, I don't know. It was just a lot of fun. I mean, we were we were out there. Uh, it was cold. We were on top of a an old uh, parking garage over there in Hazard, and um, you know that was. Uh, I thought that was the Pikeville parking garage. There, no, no, that okay. was uh, the parking garage in Hazard, um, and uh, we. Uh, had some caro syrup and some uh, food coloring and uh, and a rag with with it all over it, and I'd well, I'd go to uh, you know the motion of hitting him with the pistol, and then I'd dab some blood on his face, and then I'd do it again and dab some more, you know. Yeah, it was great. We just he really pulled out all the stops, man. He with the lighting and just they had a, the camera that they used was, you know, yeah. they bought just for that. That video because it, it, it looks like something out of a Hollywood movie. Uh, I mean, that I camera was that the lens and stuff they bought is for cinema. Like yeah. they 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 you, you they really went out. Man. They they did a great job. I'm just super impressed and proud of them. They, it was it was really just really good. I'm really glad uh, you know that we've became and we became really good friends too. I, mm-hmm. Like out of this whole ordeal, that's the thing that's that's the most important to me and that's the coolest is like those guys are some really good guys and. Yeah. Uh, and got some got a lifelong friendship out of it, and it's see it's cool to see him grow too. I, I don't know the guy personally, but I follow all of their stuff on social media, and I remember you telling me about them last time mm-hmm. you were up here, and I'd never heard of them before, to be honest. But it seems like ever since I heard of them from you, I'm just seeing stuff 
constantly and those dudes really have a lot going on mm -hmm. so a big shout out to fat cave studio and possibly the coolest name for a studio around here that i've heard yet well sam's Very nickname was fat sam and he's a, he's a big guy uh and he he uh yeah, he owns it. Yeah, you know? I, I seen the pictures and I kind of got where the name came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Sam owns it and he he's all and, and he hey, just that, rolls that man, with it, man. He is talented though. Yes, he Thank is. Goodness gracious, the the just the production of the EP itself, like this, the quality of the mastering, and I didn't know that he'd done the music videos as well. That just blows my mind right there. Was one of the bloopers that you cut off the wrong finger? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that would have been good though. Like, oh my bad! Oh, I was supposed to cut the fake one, and I cut it. Hey, and, and, and that dude was a good actor too. Um, yeah, he's actually a doctor in. Uh, he's a gastroenterologist over in Hazard. Whoa! Yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a. I never knew a doctor with a mullet. Well, it's a bit of a. It's, it's just long on top. It's not mullet-ish. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's just. It's like really long on top. He doesn't really have a mullet. It's like okay, just kind of. Kind of looked mullety in the music video. I think he had it the way he had it combed. Like yeah, maybe it is a mullet. I don't know. I don't mm. think it is. Just never would have thought of that as a doctor. Yeah, yeah. man, like one of your fans going to get a checkup one day. Like, hey, doc, you, <laughs> you still got all ten Where, of them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got all ten digits? <laughs> yeah. that, that's cool though, man. So, w so what's your plans now? I, I know that you just released the EP. Do you got like a bunch of shows and stuff coming? Oh, uh, I, I actually do have some shows lined up. We just had the release show uh, at the venue in Moorhead, which was awesome. <clears throat> it was. I, it I was haven't sold been out. there yet, but man, I've heard a lot of good things about they that place. have. They are doing things right there. Um, they have turned that into the listening room. It is a musician's dream. That's what I've heard from everybody. It is a musician's dream there. They have uh, taken that that old theater. They revamped the old movie theaters. What it is there across from the uh, across from the police station in Moorhead, and um, they've got acoustic foam, acoustic tiling up. Um, it looks great in there. Um, sounds amazing. They've got a top-notch uh, sound guy, Tim Hood's his name. Um, a pleasure to work with, and um, they just go out of their way to. Uh, they've got a phenomenal green room um, that's the adjacent uh, building. Mm -hmm. They've just turned that building, that storefront, is what it was. They turned it into basically an apartment. Yeah. Um, so you, you just all the amenities that a person needs are there. Wow. Um, and they uh, they just treat you really well. That's they don't put up with you know. There's you, you stay quiet. You come there for the music. You're not there to to uh, you know come and get drunk and get, if you want to get drunk, that's fine. But How do you're they not, keep it's people not, quiet? The people that are coming are they're actually there because they're buying tickets. Oh, okay. You know the people that are coming are buying tickets to see the show. Yeah, but, you know? uh, so, but the, like the venue, well, no pun intended, the venue itself, like, doesn't like, do they do anything if people get a little bit rowdy or anything? Um, I thought that was what you were saying. I think it's kind of, well, I didn't, I, I I don't know if it's, it's probably a combination of, yeah, they're, they want you to, do, uh, you know, respect the artist, but at the same time, most of the people that are coming are are those type of people that are there to, to listen, mm -hmm. um, and the music's not just background noise you know yeah. you're coming to watch a show uh, that you paid good money for um yeah. that, that's, that's one thing i've always hated about a lot of local shows around our area is the is certain venues just won't tell people to shut up or uh, at least yeah because it's artists. just uh you're just an afterthought yeah uh, you know like, like you're, you said, your the background noise yeah it's the there that focus is the music um and um they've just they've got they're doing things right i really enjoy it i'd recommend uh you know anybody to go see a show there and to um you know, to play any musicians to play there, um, but we sold that show out. That was great. Uh, we had an amazing time. I had Clark uh, pull double duty that night. Clark played a solo set, uh, opened us up, and then he got back behind the kit and played drums. That dude's gonna be jacked working with you. Uh, I mean, just all the <laughs> strumming and then then going yeah, to drumming. Yeah. Oh, he can handle it. He's just Goodness like twenty four. <laughs> uh, but we've got a show coming up. Uh, we've got some shows here. We've got a show at the Mac, uh, playing on the four May fourteenth. I'm looking forward to that. I love playing the Mac. Yeah. Um, then uh, we've got a show in May twenty first at uh, down in Fallsburg at the Fearplex. Um, some some friends of mine um, have partnered up with the guy that owns the Fearplex there that has the campground and everything, and they decided to put on a show. Um, it's uh, Nolan Taylor and myself and. Buffalo Wobs and the Price Hill Hustle are there on Friday night. 
Great band names. And then uh, on Saturday night, they've got, um, I think, Cole Chaney, um, El Dorado, and Arlo McKinley on Saturday night. Um, I like so, Arlo, man. So that'll be, that'll be a real good show. Um, and then uh, I've got a private thing that I'm doing on, on Memorial Day weekend that's got like 30 acts on it. It's really cool, really cool place. Okay, yeah, I think I heard about that. Uh, some really good friends of mine, like Brother Smith, will be there. Yeah, it's um, like on the river. Yeah, like that. Brother Smith yeah. will be there. Eric Bolander will be there. Um, oh God, I don't even know. Uh, Jen Tackett will be there. Uh, like Jen's so awesome. Clark's, man. Clark's band will be there. Uh, yeah, Jen's great. Jen's yeah, shout out Jen Tackett. She's she's a wonderful person. Uh, one and and singer and songwriter. She's just all around good individual. See, man, that's, that's one of the coolest things about doing these podcasts is, like, every time I have a musician up here, the way that y'all talk about each other is such a beautiful thing. Like, yeah. it, it's, there's no competitive energy whatsoever. There's what no ego involved. Us? Well, you're just fighting fire with fire at that point. I mean, if, right. like, I, I heard an old saying. They, they said that if you're going out for revenge, you better dig two graves. And I think that you can also use that same mentality for ego, as well, mm-hmm. because if you're just trying to hurt somebody and make them look bad, you're just going to make yourself look even worse. That's it. That's exactly right. And man. yeah, man, I, whenever I see y'all doing all these shows together and the way that y'all talk about it, and also like your music videos, man, I've noticed this, that you'll like, well, in the perfect world, you wore the Aaron Boyd shirt and then Clark Sexton in that one. That's, it, it's, it's so cool to see everybody working together the way that they do. It's such a beautiful thing. And I think that's, that might be. Why the music scene is thriving it as is. much as it is. It is. That's is, it's exactly why it is. Um, uh, there's, we just kind of, we're all cut from the same cloth, you know, in, mm-hmm. a, in a sense, and we all want the same thing. Um, and for the most part, we all get along, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and why not? Why not be supportive? It doesn't do us any good by trying to, you know, say. You know, the heck with that guy. You know, yeah. and to her, I don't. It, 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 you know, unless they've done something. You know, it's just like life. It's life. Why? Why would we be that way to anybody? You exactly. know, it's just be supportive. Um, and mind your own business, and <laughs> yeah. be, be a nice person, and you know, life's better that way. Basically, that's all it takes, man. That's all <laughs> it, it takes. It, it is. But, but man, it's so good to see you doing so well. In life, oh, it you. is it is really a beautiful thing, man. You're an inspiration to me and many others out there. And for anybody that just wants to follow your music, your life, look up shows, all that good stuff, where do they get to do that? Um, the well, SeanWhiting.com. Uh, I do have a website. I've got you know merch and uh, and do you sell a black sheep hat on there? Uh, what's that? Do you, wear, do you sell the black sheep hat on there? No, no, it's in one of my hats. I, it's I, a very cool hat. Uh, thank you. I've always been the black sheep, uh, so I thought it was pretty fitting. Um, but uh, of course, SeanWhiting dot com, um, and then um, I'm pretty active on my Facebook at uh, and which is Sean Whiting. There's another Sean Whiting um, from the UK that's a DJ. I'm not him. <laughs> um, he spells man. his name just like me and everything, you know, S E A N W H I T I N G. Have you ever sent him a message or anything? Uh, Get him to remix uh, a perfect world. I had man, I had somebody actually. He he, this guy had apparently um, he he put his music on my when he put his music on streaming platforms, it went on my. <laughs> Pay on my artist page. Oh, the Sean Whiting dude from the UK. Yes, and oh, wow. I had people like I had people literally ask me like, "Is this your mix?" I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, look, you can't keep me in a box, but no, you know, I, I don't I'm, know, man. Like, I'm well, not, like well, now that you've lost the weight and stuff like that, you, you can be a DJ. Well, I, there, there, no, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing yeah. with it, but no, that's not me. Uh, that is not my mix. Uh, if you I, hear, I just if can't, you hear I just can't picture you with some headphones going like yeah, that man. in a club. I can. I might be able to pull that off. I don't know. Never know. I, I, I give it. A, hey, I don't think put some thought in it. <laughs> but uh, no, um, I'm also pretty active on Instagram. Um, I've got all the social the social media stuff. I, I'm not that active on Twitter and things like that. But Instagram and Facebook are what I'm mostly active on, and of course my website and YouTube. Please check out my YouTube channel. I have uh, I have a few videos on there. Um, and uh, hope to have more here 
in the, in the future. I was going to say, do you have like another one that you're kind of planning in your head? Do you have another music video down the road? Yeah, me and Sam, we plan on doing some more stuff together. It's um, good, man. So we're uh, we're going to try to keep the content rolling. Yeah, you and him, dude, are working incredible together. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a beautiful friendship right there. Y'all it are... is, man. It is. It's uh, it's. Yeah. I like the way he thinks, and he likes the way I think. And you, you can tell just like when two people like work really good together, and you get content like you've been releasing here lately. Yeah, that's the reason. And we're honest with each other, you know. I mean, uh, we. We, that's a good thing. Constructive can, criticism. Yeah, we can be honest. I, I try to be as honest with everybody as I can, yeah. and and we we throw ideas back and forth. And if I, you know, I think this don't work, and we try to we we try to keep it keep it real. Is the yeah. best way to say, man. Well, man, you're doing a good job of it. Thank you, dude. Sean, thanks again, brother. Yeah, man, it's a pleasure being here always. See you next week, folks. Boom.